Welcome to Bizarre Tales, the Halloween special. When I think of Halloween, there are a few things that instantly come to mind, such as dressing up as ghosts, vampires, witches, and other gruesome characters, trick or treat, and eating an insane amount of candy, and of course, the jack-o'-lantern, which is most commonly carved out of pumpkins. Every year, we love to carve out the most horrific face we can imagine out of these stringy, pulp-filled, overgrown fruits. But why? Why do we enjoy ripping out the guts of these pumpkins, cutting out a scary face, and then placing a candle inside. Well, to find out the answer, I'm going to have to take you back in time to Ireland, sometime between the 18th and 19th century. It was a time when superstition festered inside people's minds, and it was also the time that a mythical character was born into existence. A character who tricked the devil not once, but twice, and his name was Stingy Jack. Jack was said to be a miserable old drunken blacksmith, a tight fist, with not a shred of kindness in his black heart, and on top of this, he was very cunning and cruel, a trickster and a manipulator. So much so he had built up quite a reputation of being just an awful human being with not a shred of decency about him, he was a very selfish soul. He quickly gained the appropriate nickname of Stingy Jack. Jack's unfriendly ways caught the attention of the devil himself and it is said that the devil both admired Jack and despised him for being almost as evil as he was. The devil decided that Jack must die. He craved Jack's despicable soul and decided that it must be carved out of him. And with the devil being the devil, he knew exactly where to find Jack at the precise time. And so the devil lay down in the middle of a footpath on a cold, lonely, windy night when the moon was full in the sky. It wasn't long before Jack came stumbling along that very same footpath, as drunk as a skunk, and he instantly noticed this strange figure laying on the floor in front of him. As Jack approached the body on the floor, the devil whipped his head around, and the light of the moon illuminated his horrific features. Jack, startled, jumped back as the devil rose to his feet. Jack gave a shudder as the devil grew in size, right in front of him, engulfing him in his dark shadow. The devil outstretched his bony finger and pointed between Jack's eyes. And then, the devil spoke. I have come for your soul. Jack gave a long, hard, dry gulp. It had been only ten minutes since his last shot of whiskey, and he would have given anything for one more shot right now to calm his nerves, although he wasn't sure that it would help. Jack plucked up the courage, and then he spoke. May, may I have one request before you take my soul? Said Jack. The devil was a little shocked by this man's nerve or maybe stupidity to even be thinking of speaking to him, but he was now curious and a little bit amused, and he nodded to Jack. Name it, Jack. Jack paused for a moment, licked his dry, cracked lips, and spoke. A pint of ale is what I request. One last pint. The devil was somewhat amused and saw no reason not to grant Jack's last request. Very well, Jack. One drink, and one drink only, and when you are done, your soul is mine. And so Jack and the devil went to the nearest inn, and ordered his beverage. Jack and the devil, who seemed to be invisible to all but Jack himself, sat at the bar and ordered his last drink. And a mug of golden brown ale was placed in front of Jack. Jack looked up at the devil's terrifying face, and the devil seemed to be getting impatient, and he gestured for Jack to get a move on and drink. Jack lifted the mug and tipped the ale down his throat until it was empty. He slammed the mug down on the bar and stirred up nervously at the devil, who now had a, pardon the pun, a devilish smile upon his face. Your soul is mine now, Jack. Wait, 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 said Jack. We haven't paid the bartender for the drink. The devil looked bemused as Jack went on. 
I, I would pay the bartender myself, but I am short of money, said Jack. Now what we must remember is that Jack was a trickster. He had a silver tongue and a way with words, and somehow he persuaded the devil to turn into a single golden coin to pay for the drink. In an instant, the devil transformed into the coin, and without hesitation, Jack grabbed the coin and stuffed it deep inside his dirty trouser pocket. The very same pocket where he just so happened to keep his crucifix. And with that, the devil was unable to transform back into his true form. He was trapped inside Jack's pocket. Jack got up from his stool at the bar and walked out of the inn into the moonlight, and then started to speak to his trouser pocket. Okay, Mr. Devil, sir, Jack said. I want to make a deal with you. I will release you on one condition, and that is that you let me go free for a whole ten years. As Jack finished speaking, the coin in his pocket seemed to get hotter, and anger radiated from it as it let out a high-pitched, horrific scream. (laughs) Jack simply said, Okay, stay in there. And with that, the coin calmed down, and all was silent. And then the devil spoke. Fine, Jack. You have a deal. And with that, Jack released the devil. Jack took the coin out of his pocket and tossed it down onto the floor. And in an instant, the devil stood over Jack and said, From this day on, your days are numbered. I will return. And with that, the devil disappeared. For ten years, Jack continued with his wicked, cruel, manipulative ways. He didn't worry much about the devil's return. After all, he tricked him once, and he was confident he could do it again. Ten years later, to the exact second, the devil returned, appearing in front of Jack, once again on a dirt path, surrounded by trees, one of which was an apple tree. Well, 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 Jack, your ten years are up. Your soul is now mine. The devil moved forward to claim what was his, when Jack spoke. Wait, 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 wait. I uh, I have a request before you take my soul. The devil stopped in his tracks. What? My my stomach is empty, and I I don't want to die on an empty stomach. Before you take my soul, may I have one of those apples from that tree? The devil looked up to see the hanging fruit. The devil saw no reason not to get Jack an apple and climbed the tree. And once again, without hesitation, Jack pulled out a blade and carved a cross into the tree, which prevented the devil from descending, trapping him once again. The devil let out an almighty roar. (laughs) He had now been fooled not once, but twice by Jack. Jack waited till the devil was quiet and spoke. I'll make a deal with you, he said. No deal, your soul belongs to me. Fine, said Jack. Stay up there. Jack began to walk away. Very well, Jack. Jack turned and smiled. Here's the deal, said Jack. Leave me and my soul alone and I'll release you. What? Leave me and my soul alone and I'll release you. The devil, knowing he was trapped and had no choice, let out another almighty roar that seemed to shake the ground that Jack stood upon. Very well, Jack. But mark my words and you mark them well. We shall meet again. And with that, the devil vanished. And Jack was left in peace for the rest of his miserable, manipulative days until the drink finally killed him. On the day of Jack's death, his soul rose up into heaven and Jack stood before God, who refused him entrance due to his sinful, wicked ways. And Jack fell back down to earth and found himself at the gates of hell. The fiery gates opened, but the entrance was blocked by Satan himself. Hello, Jack. I said we would meet again. How can I help you? Jack paused and said, May I, may I enter? The devil smiled. Sorry, Jack, I made you a deal, and a deal is a deal. Jack fell down on his knees and begged the devil to take his soul. Sorry, Jack, like I said, a deal is a deal, and now you face a much heavier fate. The devil thrust a single hollowed out turnip into Jack's hands, and then he turned and reached down into the fires of hell and produced a single glowing hot ember that he threw into the hollowed out turnip and banished Jack to walk the earth for an eternity, never resting, trapped in a dark void between heaven and hell, 
with only his lantern to light the way. Now the story of Stingy Jack became a very popular tale to tell in Ireland at the time and it is said that the good people of Ireland filled with fear and superstition in these dark days in history would hollow out turnips and place a candle inside and then place the turnip facing outwards on the windowsill or door frame to keep away Stingy Jack and all the evil spirits that roamed the night on All Hallows Eve. And as time went by and the story of Stingy Jack was passed down to generation to generation, the story did differ slightly and Jack became known under different names. He was known as Jack the Smith, Drunk Jack, Flaky Jack and Jack of the Lantern. And eventually, the more familiar, Jack o' Lantern. But wait, that doesn't explain why he carried a turnip and not a pumpkin. Well, in Ireland in those days, pumpkins simply didn't exist. They weren't natively grown in Ireland. You see, in those days in Ireland, they simply used different kinds of root vegetables to make the lanterns and scare off the evil spirits with. However, once the story of Stingy Jack crossed the ocean to America, it became a lot more popular and it became a tradition. And in America, turnips were hard to come by. But pumpkins, well, pumpkins were very easy to come by. And ever since, on Halloween, there's nothing we like to do more than carve out a spooky face into the overgrown winter squash and place it on our doorstep to greet trick-or-treaters or maybe, just maybe, ward off evil spirits, including Stingy Jack, the jack-o'-lantern. So until we all meet again, I hope you all have a very creepy, spooky, scurry Halloween. I'll see you next time, boys and ghouls. Bye-bye.